Hey guys, welcome to another video. My name is Ian, I'm Ian the Reader, and today I have got two book reviews for you. I'm super excited about both of these. These are two reads that I read for the India Chords Readathon, which is going on throughout the entire month of July, in which a ton of us readers focus on reading independently published books or self-published books, and it is awesome. I highly recommend joining us. Even though it's already a few days into the month, it's not too late. But like I said, these two books that I'm going to be reviewing today were the first two books that I read for the India Chords Readathon. Both of them are starts to series that I definitely think you are not gonna wanna miss. Those two books are Unsold, book one in the Cradle series by Will White, and The Flaw in All Magic, book one in the Mage Breaker series by Ben S. Dobson. In this video, I will be reviewing both of those books in a non-spoiler fashion. That way you can find out what these books are about, what these series are about, and whether or not they're for you. Spoiler warning, they're both great and you should totally read them. But before we jump into that, it would mean so much to me if you would like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. I post videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and I would love it if you stuck around. Okay, so first let's talk about Cradle or the Cradle series, book one being unsold by Will White. I feel like these books are inescapable these days. It is like a self-pub or indie published book, but these are wildly popular. Like I feel like so many of my friends are reading these and are caught up on them. The 11th book, Dread God, I believe, just came out on the 5th and I feel like everybody is reading it right now. So of course, I felt that fear of missing out and I had to jump into this series. Now I've actually been meaning to start this series for a long time, but I thought that the India Chords were a perfect opportunity to finally jump in and I was absolutely right. I was right to the point that I was tempted for a moment to toss out my India Chords TBR and find a way to make the following books in the Cradle series fit into the challenges for the India Chords uh, readathon just because I really wanted more after reading book one. So what is this series about? In this series, we follow Wei Shi Linden, who is an unsold. What that basically means in his society is that he is not allowed to study the sacred arts that are heavily involved in his society and the culture and really like it's the class system in a lot of ways. But the problem is because he's unsold, he's seen as being incapable, as being deficient and not being able to study or handle the study of these sacred arts, which means basically he's handicapped and he lives at home with his family and even his family like not only does the society see him as a failure and someone who's incapable but also his family does which is super harsh like you'd think he'd at least have like his parents and his sister in his corner but they're totally not of that sort uh i guess his sister maybe actually and his parents i mean they, they have moments i guess but overall they don't expect a lot out of him they don't give him a lot to work with and he's left to struggle on his own i don't want to spoil what happens in this book but i will say that through a series of supernatural events almost, but at least super events, uh, Lyndon finds out that he has to go on this journey to gain power, to study these sacred arts because he's the only one who is able to go up against this supernaturally powerful force that is coming to destroy everything he cares about. So that is the super basic version of what this series is about. Now let's talk about the things that I liked about this book. So first of all, I really liked Lyndon as a character. He definitely has a lot of things that he struggles with, not only externally, but internally. But one thing that can be said for him is that he is strong of will. He has so much determination within him and I was so amazed by that because really all the odds are stacked up against him. Nobody believes in him but he is still so determined not only to do the thing that he knows is right but even before he understands like what's at stake he just wants to feel a certain sense of ability and purpose and like he's doing the things that he wants to do and what he uses rather than like natural gifts and talents like being the chosen one or whatever instead he relies upon his wit, upon his determination, upon his will to not give up. And that's something that I absolutely loved because in his shoes, a lot of us would have just settled for being, you know, taken care of by everybody else because ultimately at the start of the story everybody else is stronger than he is everybody else is more powerful than he is they're bigger than he is but he does not let that get in the way of what he wants and he stands up to the people who won't give him what he wants even though they are super intimidating in comparison to him throughout the book he comes into a lot of situations that are tough to navigate and a lot of other people rely upon their gifts and talents to get them through or try to get them through these scenarios but instead he thinks through them he tries to figure out okay 
I am not very capable of doing this the normal way. So how am I gonna go about doing this in a way that is going to make sure that I come out on top? And I love that. I love an underdog character. I love characters who face great odds, but don't give up. He was definitely a highlight of this book. Another thing that I really enjoyed about this book was the world building. There's a lot going on here, and I won't say that I necessarily have a full grasp on it, but I think that's okay because in a lot of ways, as Lyndon levels up in this story or grows in the story, we the reader get to grow with him in that at the start of the book, a lot of the things that go on in this world and in the society are things that he is not allowed to be exposed to. So the more we get into the series, the more I can see us, the reader, getting exposed to those things as Lyndon is. That being said, I think there's so much going on just within this first book that was really a lot to chew on for the reader. It wasn't like a heavy read, but it was a very immersive read. And that's something that I really enjoyed. Will White did a fantastic job of putting you in the story quickly and not overloading you too much while also giving you a lot to realize that this is not a world similar to our own, really. There's just so much going on here that does not apply to our understanding of the world. This is very much its own independent thing, and I absolutely love that. And the last thing that I wanted to really highlight about what is so good about this book is that it is really easy to get into and really easy to consume. Like, I think this audiobook is like eight and a half hours, so it's not very long, and it is super easy to get through. And by the time you're at the end, it's like, it's like you're eating popcorn, you know? Like how you don't realize how much you've eaten of it until like half of the bucket is gone. It's that same way in that like you don't realize that you're getting to the end of the story because it's so easy to get into and enjoy that by the time you get to the end, you're like, oh, where'd the book go? <laughs> And uh, I really enjoyed that. It's exactly what I needed because somebody actually recommended it to me because I love the Dresden Files and that's kind of what those are to me is like they're these really easy to enjoy books, really easy to get through and they're addictive. And I could definitely see the Cradle series being that for me in place of Dresden Files while I'm waiting for another one of those books. So those are the things that I wanted to highlight as far as what I enjoyed. And now I do want to talk about a few things that did disappoint me about this book. I won't say that there was anything about this book that I actively disliked. Everything about it I enjoyed or I wanted a little bit more from. I won't say that there was anything that I was just like, man, I would have changed that because I really did have a good time with this book. So the first thing that I did want to mention as far as things I was disappointed in is that this definitely did feel like a setup book. Like I said before, it was really easy to get through and the ending comes quickly. And that's a good thing, but it's also not such a good thing because when I got to the end, I was like, okay, this was really, really good and I got through it fast and I enjoyed it, but it felt like we were really just getting started. And that's really what this book is. Like, it's almost like a prologue to the overall story that is to come. And that's why I even kind of hesitated on reviewing this book is because this is book one of an already published 11 books. And I can definitely see this not really fully representing what this series is going to be. And I enjoyed book one, but at the same time, I don't feel necessarily like I am qualified to review the Cradle series by any means because I've only just been dipped into this book. And for that, I do have that criticism because of the fact that if it were a different series, I could say, okay, I've read the first book and it by itself is pretty comprehensive, but this is very, very much a setup book to lead into what is going to happen in the future books. Not to say I didn't enjoy it, not to say it wasn't a great time, but I wish that this book on its own could stand a little bit more. Which kind of leads me into the other thing that disappointed me about this book is that there weren't enough meaningful side characters in this book. Obviously, it's most important that we focus on Lyndon and he is a fantastic character, so I don't mind that at all. But because this book was so short and because this is kind of him starting on this journey, the characters that were introduced to in the beginning aren't as relevant by the end of the book. And in addition to that, we get to the end of the book so quickly that the characters we're introduced to in the second half of the book don't have as much time to gain a lot of a reputation with us or to really matter to us as much as I know they will in the later books. So for this first book, obviously I love Lyndon and the characters that we are introduced to, I did enjoy, but I don't think that there was enough time with them to care about them that much. And that's one thing I really love about books and about series is that you get to spend a lot of time with a group of characters. It's not always just your main character. You get a lot of side characters to love and adore. And I know that those characters are definitely going to exist in this series, but in book one by itself, I can't say that I really cared that much about any of the characters but Lyndon. But those are really my only complaints. Like I said, this was a really solid first book in the series. I had so much fun with it. If you're looking for like a fantasy book or a 
fantasy series that has a lot of installments so that you can enjoy them for a good amount of time and really soak in the content and you want something that's not like really heavy. I know that a lot of fantasy is just like super heavy, hard to get into or really grim dark or just wildly ambitious. This is ambitious, but in a really easy to digest way. And I think it's just a lot of fun. So if you're looking for a fun fantasy series, definitely try out Cradle. As far as Unsold goes, I give this a four star, partially because of those things that I had issues with. I really did enjoy it overall. I liked it a lot, but I wanna see where this series goes next before I start handing out those higher ratings like four and a half or five stars. Okay, so now let's go ahead and move on to the second book that I wanted to discuss, and that is The Flaw in All Magic by Ben S. Dobson. This book has been on my radar for a while because like I said, I really enjoy the Dresden Files and I was looking for another sort of like urban fantasy kind of book with maybe like a detective or mystery aspect, but with fantasy as well. And this definitely does qualify as that type of book. This is the first book in a five book series that I believe is complete. I could be wrong, but I think that the series is now over after those five books, which is always kind of nice. But this is definitely a fantasy mystery type of book in that we have a murder at the center of this first book that our characters have to go about trying to solve. Our main character is Tane Carver, who is a very interesting protagonist. The reason being, he lives in this world full of magic and full of these magical creatures, including like goblins and orcs and things like that, but he has no magic. Now, the interesting thing about him is that before the start of the story, he actually used his wit and intelligence to trick people into thinking that he did have magic. He even went to a university for magical technology and went through that kind of like as like the star student. He excelled in this program despite having no magical abilities at all. That being said, before the start of the book, he has revealed that he has no magic and he is now a disgrace. He's been kicked out of the school. He's not a part of the society anymore. People don't even like to speak his name. Despite that, he definitely has a reputation because of his intelligence and because of the thing that he's done and because of his unique ability to analyze magic and to see past it. The, the title of The Flaw in All Magic is because the main character believes that all magic has a flaw in it and he is particularly gifted at identifying those flaws. That is the reason that he is brought in to investigate this murder that takes place on the campus. His unique set of qualifications are what bring him to the point of being asked to investigate this murder that takes place on the campus of somebody from his past. We also have a bit of a buddy cop angle in this in that he gets an unlikely partner in the half-orc Kadka, who is a really fascinating character who I enjoyed a lot. So let's talk about what I enjoyed about this book. So first of all, I really enjoyed the mystery aspect. In this, we have a sort of like impossible crime that has taken place. It's a murder that shouldn't have been able to happen because of some magical things going on at the school, but it happened anyway. So you have kind of this impossible crime that nobody can really understand how it took place. So that's always kind of a fun angle to come at where you have like, not just like a run of the mill, murder, but there's more to it. And that was something that I really enjoyed about this. And in addition to that, I really enjoyed the personal ties and the personal stakes that our main character had to this, because not only is it taking place on this campus that he used to go to, but also it involves people that he cared about very much in his past life. And there are all of those complicated emotions and complicated relationships that he has to navigate as he's trying to solve this murder. Speaking of complicated relationships though, that is one thing that I really enjoyed about this was the relationships and the characters themselves. Our main character is really, really a lot of fun. And in a lot of ways, he actually reminds me of Lyndon from Unsold. I read these back to back and I can see a lot of comparisons because both of them rely upon their intelligence and their perseverance to be successful while not being gifted in things that a lot of other people are gifted in. That being said, this character is definitely a bit more cocky. He is a little bit more like, believes he's smarter than everybody else. He definitely believes himself to be like all that in a bag of chips because he fooled everybody and then he revealed it. And yeah, he got kicked out of society, but he still has that confidence that came with him believing that he tricked everybody and being at the top of the class and all that jazz. And I really enjoyed not only his confidence, but also his vulnerability that kind of bled through that confidence anyway. He definitely does have a lot of relationships that he struggles with and people that he cares about, but at the same time, he can't change who he is. And that's something that other people are going to have to learn to accept, that he's not what they expected him to be, not maybe what they wanted him to be. And yes, he lied to them, but at the end of the day, this is the person that he is. In addition to our main character, like I said, I really enjoyed Kafka. I thought she was a great addition. I love 
love having a half orc as a main character or like not the main character but as one of the main characters and she brought a really interesting angle not only in like her background and her history but also the way that she's treated and the way that the other like fantastical creatures or races are treated is an interesting angle to this book because the goblins and the orcs are not trusted as much as the humans are. And so there's definitely almost like a racism aspect that is introduced into the story. And you get a different perspective on that because we have a main character who is a half orc. These two main characters had such great chemistry together. It was definitely like an unlikely pairing that kind of happens in a mostly believable way. Um, but I really enjoyed the way that all of that played out and where things end up at the end of the book. It definitely leads me to believe that the following books are going to be even better than this one. And the last thing that I really wanted to talk about as far as the things that I enjoyed in this book was the world itself, how it's a fantastical world with these fantastical different races and things like that, but they all live together in harmony for the most part. Like I said before, there's a little bit of discrimination and prejudice that exists, but I enjoyed reading a book where it wasn't like, okay, there's our main characters who are like this one race and then they are just opposed to all of these other races. It was nice to read something where they're all kind of like on a level playing field for the most part. And that was just kind of an interesting thing to read, at least like in an urban fantasy setting. Obviously you have like Lord of the Rings where there's, you know, uh, dwarves and elves and hobbits living in harmony together for the most part. But in this, having an urban fantasy setting where there's technology and universities and like things like that, but also having these different uh, fantastical beings living together. I thought that that was a lot of fun to read and I definitely am excited to see how that is explored further in the following books. Now let's talk about the things that I was a little bit disappointed in in this book. So first of all, kind of going on the back of the thing that I just complimented this book on is that there's so much going on in this world and there are a lot of different creatures and things like that, but in book one at least, this feels like a mostly contained story. We are thrust into this university and most of the book takes place there and we get a little bit of a picture of the bigger world and the society that exists beyond it, but not nearly as much as I would have liked. Like, obviously this is kind of like a low stakes adventure, not necessarily like, oh my gosh, the world is at stake in this book. And maybe that's okay, but at the same time, if you're going to have this class system that exists and this world that exists and all these different creatures and things like that, I wanna know where everything falls, you know? I want it to be a little bit more structured, a little bit more outlined. And I'm sure that that will most likely be dug into a little bit deeper in the following books, but for the first book, I could have used a little bit more of a foundation to understand what this world is being built on. And the only other real complaint I have about this book is kind of, again, a similarity to Unsold, in that this book just felt too brief. You know, it very much felt like a prologue to the books that are to come. In some ways, I kind of feel like this could have been like a novella that introduces the characters, or maybe like even a novella that comes like is published after the main story of the next book because when we get to the end of book one, it's almost like, oh, okay, now this is the story that we're actually going to be telling and we get into that. But this feels very much like setting up that story in a way that could have been like either shorter or longer, if that makes sense. Like either getting to the point that we're at at the end of the book earlier and then digging into that a little bit more or having a separate novella that is short and brief and to the point that sets up the books that are to come, if that makes sense. Ultimately though, those are my only complaints and I just thought this was a really good time. I thought the mystery was very compelling. I thought the emotional aspect of this and the stakes that are involved like personally were really well handled. And I thought that this was just a really easy time to enjoy. And I am eagerly anticipating picking up the second book, maybe this month, if not this month, then probably next month, because I do have access to the audiobook on Hoopla. It's going to happen soon though. That being said, for the flaw in all magic, I'm going with a four star as well. This was a great time and I highly recommend you getting into this if you enjoy the Dresden Files, or if you just want a fantasy book that is a little bit different and has a nice mystery aspect to it as well. But that is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments if you have read any books in either of these series, or if you have been convinced convinced by my reviews to try them at some point. I highly recommend both of them. It is always great to read some self-published or indie fantasy and both of these series are a lot of fun. So next time you're looking for a quick read, they're both like super short. I think Unsold was like eight and a half hours and I think The Flan All Magic was only like six and a half hours or something like that. They're both super quick and when you're looking for a quick and easy read, these are perfect. But thank you again for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!